goddess, earth pentology. I'm going to give you an overview of the pentology uh, right now. Uh, what is a pentology? Uh, it's a literary work divided into five parts. In this case, five separate full-color coffee table books. And each book is reasonably self-contained. Though there is an ideal order, uh, you know, start how they're stacked up in this Earth People. Welcome page. There are no form people first. Earth Freaks. Uh, the Hippie History of Golden Kathmandu. Yearning for Earth Legs. And uh, the Hippie History of Hashish. But, uh, hey, say you're 24-year-old. <laughs> like I was when I wrote Earth Freaks. Just go into there. I talk like a 24-year-old, you know. Fuck these nations, you know. They're, they're log jams in the river of our terrestrial evolution. Oh, yeah, I go into the U.S. Embassy in India and renounce my citizenship and all citizenships. And I've walked that walk for 50 years. I have authority to speak about these global issues because I walk it. And I've walked it for 50 years. Yeah. Well, say you're a Tibetan Buddhist, a meditator, yogi. Uh, go, go, go right for There Are No Foreign People. This is the best book to start with anyway, but that details how I met Goddess Earth in a cosmic dimension beyond Earth when I was a mere 21 years old, hanging out with Tibetans in a remote Himalayan monastery. Yeah, she came into my life and we fused, you know, 50 years ago, 1969. <laughs> Shiva Shakti fused. She's talking to you right now. Mystica. What is a mystica? A human being who merges and experiences reality, not the optical delusion, uh, <laughs> dualistic, uh, separative uh, way of perceiving. Optical delusion, yeah. Wonder who coined that phrase. It's so brilliant. Huh? Oh, Albert Einstein. Yeah, you're a Tibetan, uh, uh, a mystic. Uh, you go uh, to chapters 8 and 9, and there are no foreign people, and uh, you'll find out how we, uh, Goddess Earth and I, were assigned to a mission. And it's taken 50 years to complete it. And we this these video books completed. What's that mission? To teach humanity about earth people yeah goddess earthy uh we call the uh there's mosquitoes here <laughs> you know uh, i recorded these on my porch in hawaii it's been fun and uh, kind of itchy yeah uh the theme goddess earth the, uh, the, it, the title is her because appropriately so she's interwoven through all five books she's the star shining through and you, I will be speaking with her uh, in every book, often. Oh, ho, oh, Goddess Earth, what's that? We need a twist in the plot right about now because the millennials are falling to sleep. Not enough clit bait. A, a click, cl click, click, click bait. Put a little more sex in there right then, okay. Thank you, Goddess. I mean, you know, yeah. So we're <laughs> we're few. So you're getting male, female, Shakti, Shiva, all, the whole way through. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, let's see. Uh, what do the books look like? Uh, okay, I happen to have a stack of them here. In order of ideal viewing. Hmm. There are no foreign people. Look at that brilliant cover work. That's by Autumn Sky. Uh, you know, like the planet's uh, best visionary artist. 
got a little studio up on the Sunshine Coast in British Columbia, yeah. <laughs> we visited in Hawaii. And, uh, you know, there's a professional situation here. I lease these, uh, the rights to her images. And uh, thank you, Autumn Sky. <laughs> You're so cool. <laughs> Look at that cover, huh? There are no foreign people, yeah. Every ethnic group. It's in the cuffs, in the jewelry. Okay. Yeah, the books look like that. I'll show you each book as I kind of review a little bit more specifically a particular book. Uh, these books are full color and coffee table. and You get them just by saying the title into your smartphone. It's an Amazon book, and they'll mail it directly to your doorstep. There are some things uh, that are in these video books that are not in the printed books. Uh, I was just saying chapter 8 and 9, and there are no foreign people, the most esoteric of all, all the passages. Uh, they're not in the printed books. And conversely, I've purposely not recorded some elements in the books. To, you know, video's a different medium. You've got to get it up. You know, a little bit more, uh, you, you know, the printed book, you just sit down, cook your dinner and come back or meditate and come back. So, uh, for instance, the Eight Finger Eddie book, uh, I skipped the first 39 years of his life pretty much. You know, I kind of bookend it with a little bit uh, an overview, but uh, get right into Copenhagen, India, Nepal, where the juice of his, his story is. Oh, uh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I could not have uh, manifested these books without her help. God <laughs> yeah. uh, We co-create these. And uh, it's a long trip. It's taken me a year, at least, uh, to do this. Thank you, helping me, Goddess Earth. Yeah. And, you know, it's the culmination of our life mission, hers and mine, uh, to teach humanity about Earth people. And, uh, yeah, it's fulfilled my 50-year quest to deliver the message. I was born to deliver. Feels so good. <sighs> Message to live with. You're reviewing it right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, guys, here's the star. Running through all the books. And appropriately so. Focus on the female energy. I mean, male. <laughs> Look what the male energy has uh, created in our world today. An infected, disgusting destructive point of view bring on the women <laughs> you know like in New Zealand yeah she got a, she got a handle on that a COVID-19 right away and it never that evil genie never got out of the bottle in New Zealand women handled this much better Merkel in Germany and uh, well uh, uh, Trump in America 200,000 Americans dead on the altar of his egomania. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, I, I want to make a shout out to Andre in Mountain View. He's one of the uh, pillars and founders of the Earth People Community. He's our technical uh, technical guy. See, Andre, see? Andre, the... the he, Andre, put these on the, the Earth People Welcome page. He's like, no, we don't need it. No print is... Look, this book's kind of de uh, dedicated and targeted to baby books. Andre, we need printed stuff like this. See that? That way you can see each page number corresponding to the video. We like maps in our hand. So, <laughs> thanks, Andre. I mean, to load this, it would have taken me till 2024 to upload this to our welcome page. And it took Andre three weeks. We're talking 35 hours of video. And that's, you know, after, you know, 
taking up five hours uh, just to make the stories run a little faster and smoother. This is 40 hours of uploading. It took Andre three weeks to uh, upload these clips. Nice thing about the clips, uh, if you like one particular clip, you just go to the three dot uh, vertical menu to the right of the clip, press it, and then, then share. Uh, during this pandemic, do not despair in our isolation. Copy Earth People videos and share. They're all free. Uh, you know, it makes things move faster. As you hear in the books, I believe all things should be free. We should all be unshackled and unslaved from economic uh, meaningless toil. Don't get me started on that. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's let's look a little more specifically at each book. There are no foreign people. Starts out with beautiful introduction. Our fifty-year human angel love affair. Oh, so, uh, chapter two. Uh, go to India. Celestial calling. In in this chapter is my one-hour stage show. I've been performing stand-up comedy and producing shows for the last 20 years. The Earth People Comedy Club, born in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so it makes me kind of hip to phrasing, like linger a little bit before that punchline word, you yeah. know? That kind of thing, phrasing and uh, facial expressions. Oh, uh, yeah, enjoy the film. Uh, it's a live stage show. Yeah, I did a 12-year run at the prestigious uh, Harvard Hot Springs uh, Wellness Center in California, north of San Francisco. And this stage show in Chapter 2 of There Are No Foreign People is performed by a live audience in the theater of this uh, Hot Springs Resort. <laughs> so you see me acting with all my makeup. And God is there these pedicures and rainbow toe polish, toenail polish, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, but, you know, I mean, the first chapter, yeah, okay, kind of National Geographic in the Himalayas. Uh, oh, I don't, my passport's smeared with comic poetry. Got to jump to international. Well, that's kind of fun. But you get to se chapter four, the sexual embrace of the goddess, and phew, you never come down for the rest of your life, huh? Yeah. Oh, the Earth turned inside out. Uh, uh, I, I, I uh, cosmic sketches, automatic sketches. Never did it before. Never did it after in my life. I got these two sketches. They were downloaded through the uh, by the Tibetans through me. <laughs> Esoteric as it can get, because the Earth actually turns inside out. Mountain peaks facing inward. Read, read about. It. Oh, I actually hold the mirror up to the book. <laughs> you know, I do that once in a while because a lot of my friends don't have uh, forty bucks to buy a coffee table book. They're all forty bucks, except the hippie history of Ashish, because that's dedicated to prisoners in jail. Tone that down to thirty bucks. Well, all right, imprisonment during Woodstock. Yeah, I mean it's easy to be, you know. Oh yeah, I, I I I love astral travel. I'm so here. Uh, give me a big chunk of my spiritual materialism, and I'll just wallow in that. Huh? Yeah, blah blah blah. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I get busted, <laughs> Catman do for evading serving in the Vietnam War. Mm hmm. Arrested at JFK. In tombs in the tombs in Manhattan, just as Woodstock is beginning. <laughs> yeah, I experienced Woodstock in prison, underground in the tombs of Manhattan. So I like this because it's like, uh, hey, all spiritual uh, blah blah blah. Does it stand and deliver in the real world? I mean, we got Maya, we got Evo, we got slaughter of millions of Earth people on an annual basis. Uh, uh, how does that run? How does that spirit force 
run through that. Well, you'll see there, imprisonment during Woodstock. Yeah, then. yeah, spiritual power also, you know, soul force, spiritual audacity. It's powerful, rare. And after living with Tibetans, don't mess with my spirit or my earth people or Um, so yeah, and then, you know, the divine mission in harmony with our global destinies and so on. And so on. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's get to Earth Fricks. Uh, oh, there it is, under there. Um, this is like, this is like the book for young rebels. And the basic idea is, you know, don't waste your life, you know, uh, salivating and uh, over the injustices of your nation yeah get higher i mean take the nations with you because you know <laughs> they're part of uh, our reality but um um go pro earth do something positive instead of reacting to this reacting to that yeah do something positive open your heart let's have earth people well, that's Andre's helping with that too. We're, we've created this Earth People community. It's like on, been on for 20 years now, but we want to make it accessible to people now. Like uh, it would be fun to just put your name or whatever sound you you like to call yourself and and and, and register as an Earth person. So look in the future on our Earth People page and. Uh, Say, so you can join us. You can interact with us. We, you know, we Earth people are rare at this time. Uh, and we, it's not the numbers either. If we can get, I mean, 20 or 30, you know, creative Earth people together. Ooh, wow. We can really change and, and, and save our world from destruction. West Coast is burning down. Earth freaks. So, oh, yeah. Uh, if you just look at the first clip in the first chapter of Earth Freaks, you'll get, you'll save yourself 35 more hours of viewing. Because <laughs> the gist of the whole thing is clip one entitled Wake the Fuck Up. And no frills global reality. Okay. So the first two chapters, chapter one, Laos during the Vietnam War in 1971, as hippies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going through there with my girlfriend. I'm 24, she's 20. We're smoking opium in the opium den in the shack in the cemetery and having a lot of fun. Then the scene moves to Bali. 50 years ago, it was like when Gauguin first uh, hit Tahiti in uh, 1891, all the women bare-breasted, no, no sexual charge in the atmosphere, uh, totally free, and you know, really a dozen, uh, a dozen hippies on the whole island. Now there's thousands. Uh, you go to Ubud, there's 5,000 American expatriates <laughs> in the greater Ubud area, all buying a Balinese jewelry, batiks. It's lying the whole world. Every little head shop, gift shop you go to has got all these stuff. Yeah, parting. Mm -hmm. Fucking like pure animals. So the first two chapters shows my kind of like uh, cocky 24-year-old uh, having so much fun. Pure LSD coming in from California. Drowning in Sumatran superbuzz and all that, you know. Then I get rumblings of, uh, I'm destined for a kind of a higher kind of love. So I break out of that. And then, uh, you know, that's why I skip LSD visions in Borneo, Malaysia, and Thailand. Because it just says about the same thing uh, as the first two chapters. Because I want to move really quickly to the earth is my witness. Uh, I show up for the earth. I remember... That day, huh? 1971, 24, wearing my old Zadu orange uh, sarong, <laughs> red rock shirt. 
I show up at the embassy and uh, legally renounce, renounce my citizenship and all citizenship. So I've been an uh, earth man for the last 50 years. I mean, if you want to state it negatively, that's uh, a stateless person. But look, I was born an earth person and I'm going to die an earth person. I'm not going to be allow people to define me negatively. Well, let's talk about my cock. I am not uh, uncircumcised. My cock is. I don't don't define my 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 Shiva lingam negatively. I have a healthy, intact, natural cock just like the day I was born. I have nothing to do with circumcision or not. I just, I have a natural cock. I'm an earth person. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, 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 a delight. Uh, after that, I go see Ram Dass. Hmm. I was living on the next island, huh? Maui. I just passed away. 88 years old, oh, Ram Dass. Thank you so much. Be here now in my heart and never leave. What a giant. Went up and hung out with him and his guru named Karoli Baba. And then people would ask me, like a lot of my memoirs about, I'm a young guy in, in Asia, in, in the Greek islands and, and India and Southeast Asia in my 20s, but what happened now? I need another paper. I need another clothespin is what's happening now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's a chapter of 50 years later, I end up uh, falling in love, getting married in Temboche Monastery on a two-month Mount Everest track, and then went, end up in the hog farm, the wavy gravy house in Kathmandu. So, yeah, 50 years later. Okay, what happens? Um, what well, happens? Uh, 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 I, I, I remain faithful to my vision. And, and that leads me, <laughs> as a legal earth person, uh, to get need to get a refugee travel document <laughs> for stateless person. Yeah. Uh, which leads me to uh, perform these uh, improvisational song and dance routines at international borders to talk my way in and out of countries as a free earth person. <laughs> and that caused me, I got really good at it, that caused me to create the Earth People Comedy Club 20 years ago in San Francisco. Uh, we, we, we lit it up <laughs> in San Francisco at the Blue Bear Theater prestigious Fort Mason Arts Center, rented the whole theater, then did the 12-year run at the resort. And uh, uh, one of the guys, one of the youngsters in my uh, crew, W. Kamau Bell, now the host of uh, United Shades of America on CNN. So proud of you, W. Kamau. Righteous, enlightened man, and <laughs> when he goes on stage to do comedy, <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, so yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. The comedy club because I found out that 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 uh, people open their hearts. You want people to open their hearts if you have insights that will. You know, foster our planet, like keep it alive. You got to open people's hearts. Well, how do you do that? Well, I found out that belly laughs open the heart. The energy from this chakra, you know, coming up opens your heart. Now, it's not, you can't cram down new insights and paradigms. You can't cram it down from the mind. You can't shove it down people's throats. That doesn't open their heart when you get them laughing. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, oh, that makes sense in a way. We're all in the earth. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, so then the third book I recommend um, is um, uh, the, the Hippie History of Gaul and Kathmandu with the subtitle Eight Finger Eddie. Uh, this book features two months worth of interviews. Uh, there we are on the beach, just 20 year olds. Uh, she's making chapatis. Uh, somebody's making chapatis. Uh, uh, I like this three beginning book because first, you know, uh, there are no foreign people. I'm 21. Earth freaks. I'm 24. But the coming of the Earth people uh, in Go and Kathmandu. I'm 61. So it's again, it's how how I am as an elder. And Eddie was 85, and he. he had the whole history of the hippie scene in his head. He was a walking memory. And he, I flew over there from San Francisco because he wasn't doing too well health-wise. And he died and was cremated in Go 22 months after. Fortunately, I captured these, uh, these essential interviews. And we worked off his own autobiography. We used that skeleton uh, work uh, as our main source so eddie and i had his autobiography uh, at joe bananas cafe and we checked that and it was all out of order <laughs> uh go ahead and read it if you want it's called my rise to relative obscurity you you, you can get it and print it out it's a hundred and some page <laughs> but good luck um i actually had to take the whole book physically <laughs> And each folder make a different year. And, you know, so to put a story to it, then I wove my own story of interviewing him and landing in India in 2008, 2000. And exactly at the time when eight commando terrorists uh, held Bombay hostage for, for over a week and killed 167 Indians. So I had this surreal experience of writing a book about hippies during a terrorist attack. Yeah, Taj Mahal tail on fire. Swimming pool. Blood red. Uh, I don't really like biographies too much, especially writing them. I never wrote one. I don't think I'll ever write one again. They start out so slow. I mean, it's to go on and on and on. <sighs> so uh, in, in the video book, I have uh, just summarized uh, briefly the first 39 years of Eddie's life. Yeah, so since that of a 12 and a half hour <laughs> performance book, it's more like 10. And you get your right to when he arrives in Copenhagen. And uh, yeah, second part. Go was a wild brief, Earth Child for the Ages. Uh, hippies hassle to extinction. Old hippies flee Go. And uh, yeah. If you were one of the 300,000 freaks who did the overland route from Istanbul to Kathmandu and go, you'll love this book. It'll really teleport you there. And as a side note, I recommend the book A Season in Heaven by David Tomery. It's the perfect companion book for Eight Finger Eddie. It's 20-some oral interviews. Just a magnificent book. David and I talked on the phone a few times. In Goa, we, you know, God, he says his book swapped across and stuff. So uh, I'd like to see. It, it's out of print. Lonely Planet first printed it, but no. You can get it used on the internet. Season in Heaven, The Hippie History of Go and Kathmandu, perfect companion books. Okay. Well, hmm. oh, now for the star attraction of all the books. Look at this babe here. Yearning for Earth Legs. Well, oh, that's got us earthy. Oh, thank you, uh, Darren Mink, another California visionary artist. He just, he just gave me this. Like, hey, Mara, you can use that. Uh, go ahead. Uh, hmm. um, yeah, this book is all set in the Greek islands. It's about my uh, uh, reunion, uh, going back to my Earth uh, Ganesh cave in Greece uh, after I'd been away for 30 years. And uh, Goddess Earth is uh, relaxed enough and protected enough. She actually jumps out of my body. She's used to using me as kind of armor <laughs> uh, in this 
toxic earth environment. Yeah, she doesn't like loud noises and violence and TV jingle bullshit and sound of cars and leaf blowers and all that stuff. I mean, she's not from earth. She doesn't even have a body. So she, you know, uh, takes refuge in inside my body, inside my heart. But in this book, this is mostly about her. And once she comes out, she then the book, uh, she takes over the book. Uh, she actually speaks the book. I mean, she's the star. She's in, She goes back in time in different Greek islands to uh, Persephone. She becomes Persephone, uh, the Oracle of Delphi. She becomes the Oracle of Delphi and tells the story from the inside. Yeah. Uh, if you're romantic, this is the romantic book. Because in my cave, under the bed, I find my old romantic diary. About my love with Cleopatra, a gorgeous Australian, stunner from down under. You know. Just so, uh, see, look, look, you get the book. I talk about my cave. Well, here's a complete diagram, uh, you know, layout of the cave, each room. Uh, <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, the view from the cave, looking at St. Nicholas Bay, or turquoise water. Oh. Anyway, each book's loaded with uh, 40 full-color photographs, uh, or black and white sketches, you know. I like the reader to know exactly where he is at all times. These books without maps get a life. So there's maps all through all of these books. Oh yeah, Earth Freaks, I'm in Borneo, I'm in Malaysia, I'm in Thailand, Laos. Yeah, you'll know where you are. <laughs> um, yeah, the goddess Earth jumps out of my body for the first time. Mm -hmm. Then, okay, she becomes Cleopatra. <laughs> because she yearns for Earth legs. Why? Because angels, dakinis, fairies, they can't fuck like human beings because they have no substance to their body just pass through everything so they yearn for the human touch you know and so by possessing Cleopatra my first love she just, just goes back in time she can time travel for future paths and she becomes Cleopatra and then when, when we're you know, doing the Kama Sutra on a bed of sponges. She's getting it. And she's loving it. And I'm loving it too. Okay. <laughs> you know. Um, oh, there's things we can do in her world that we love to do, like shape shift, you imagine. You can be anything in any shape. Just all you have to do is imagine it. And so that we, they have things, uh, fun aspects that we yearn for. And we have characteristics that they yearn for and she yearns for her earth legs so uh, earth legs right. oh i left out chapters five and six in the video edition the books like start out 13 and a half hour video performance and uh ugh. Just ha put a little more giddy up in it. Uh, you can get those chapters in the book. <laughs> they're, they're fascinating. Uh, uh, naked Dutch hippie chicks. All stoned on LSD. With me. In a haunted, macabre hotel. In a spooky hind fo pine forest. Yeah. Another main character is Manoles Macranati. He's just a charismatic, handsome, heartful Greek cab driver. He's, He's with, uh, rip, uh, woven through through the stories. Uh, chapter 7, yin-yang switchback maneuver. This is where uh, we switch. Uh, we we, we timeshare my human body. And uh, when we make the switch, we call that our yin-yang switchback maneuver. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, she, uh, uh, she, uh, the mystery drug of the Delphic Oracle. She becomes the Delphic Oracle uh, in the seventh century BC. This is hilarious. This is really funny, and uh, it's all in her voice. Shiva Hawk of Potmos, uh, near the end of the book. My favorite piece of writing as a standalone short story. 
dead gal and earth man. Shiva Hakapatmos about St. John's, who, 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 who wrote the Revelation, you know, that last uh, uh, apocalyptic horror story tacked on to the end of the Christian Bible. You know, that's about him. We made a pilgrimage to his cave. And finally, Namaste, my beloved gurus. Uh, it's about the death of my parents, 27 days apart in Florida. Uh, heartfelt performance and uh, Namaste. I'm so fortunate to have my parents as my first guru. <laughs> my father is my first guru. Uh, well, okay. Uh, finally, last, we're, 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 we're winding this up. Uh, the Hippie History of Hashish. Uh, one of the nice things about this book is... Uh, well, after 95 years, copyrights run out. So uh, there was a painting craze in Europe called the um, Orientalist period, you know, 1880s, 1860s, 1890s, when uh, the first few people were, were like going to uh, Cairo and uh, Istanbul and uh, they painted uh, wonderful pictures. So I was able, this book is also a collection of the world's best Orientalist paintings. And she's serving up a uh, hookah of hashish there. Uh, 1864. So, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, th this book is 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 uh, sexually explicit. It's erotic uh, on purpose. <laughs> so, uh, because it's dedicated. To prisoners who have been busted for entheogens. What are entheogens? Okay. Marijuana. Oh. Earth freaks now. Starring Rainbow. She's 20 and 24. Um. Let's see, what is it talking about? Those color pictures? Uh, 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 let's, uh, let's get a big one. Oh, I mean, like this. I mean, this is a uh, harem woman. Uh, what? What? Renoir. So, uh, so what about this book? Okay. Uh, I've been busted. I've been prison time. And I, I wanted to write a book for prisoners. I know what it's like, okay? So I wanted to create the ideal fantasy prison bunk companion fantasy prison bunk companion well she's a good star isn't 